गाड़गेश्वर स्टार्ट करूया करूया ओके चालू करूया का ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स इन कोलैबोरेशन विद आईक्यूएससी organizes a national online conference on statistics and its applications 2023 that is ncsa 2023 with the department of statistics and iqsc of dr ganputrao deshmukh mahavidyalay sangola formerly known as vigyan mahavidyalay sangola taluka sangola district solapur maharashtra india welcomes you for one day national online conference on statistics and its applications 2023 the head department of statistics and convener is mr p k garge the organizing secretary and anchor dr j v thombre the iqsc coordinator dr s s dasade the members of organizing committee the organizer and principal of our college dr s m mulani have taken efforts to make this online conference successful along with entire teaching and non teaching staff of college statistics plays a key role in the development of modern science management and many other important applied areas with this motivation in mind the department was established in 1991 the department is running bsc first and bsc second courses apart from teaching the department has actively participated in research activity and overall development of student for better exposure of research department of statistics in collaboration with iqsc has organized a one day national online conference on statistics and its applications that is ncsa 2023 we are starting with inaugural session and keynote speaker is professor p b gute director school of computational sciences punneshlok ahiladevi holkar solapur university solapur and president of inaugural session is dr s m mulani sir principal of our college i request convener and head department of statistics mr v k gharge sir for welcome address mr v k gharge sir it's over to you good morning to one and all at the outset of outset i welcome you all for the inauguration on of online national conference on statistics and its application organized by Department of Statistics, Dr. Ganpati Rao Deshmukh Mahavidyalay Sangola, the institution Sangola Taluka Chetkari Shikshan Prasarat Mandal Sangola was established on 
15th May 1969 with the aim of giving availability and facility of education to socially backward society to Bahujan society including Harijan, Girijan, farmers and laborers and socially deprived from progress in the region of Sangola Taluka. Since its establishment, the institution has started high school, junior college, professional courses of plus two sections and Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh Mahavidyal. Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh Mahavidyal was established on 23rd September 1991. Our president led Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh was has eminent personality. He bears a world record of being MLA for 55 years, belongs to one party that is Peasant and Workers Party of India and one constituency. He was, was active not only in the politics, but also in the social works. I am very fortunate to have Professor Dr. Phoebe Gute, sir, Director, School of Computational Science, Pune Slok Ahila Devi Kolkar Solapur University, Solapur, as a chief guest for this inauguration function. And we feel blessed, Principal Dr. S. M. Mulani, as a president for this program. I welcome both these eminent personalities for this function. I also welcome research persons for today's online national conference, Professor Tiruputi Padi, Dr. Deepak Sakte, and Dr. Anjali Upadhyay. I also welcome Principal Dr. B. G. Kore, Professor Dr. K. G. Poddar, and Dr. Navin Chandra, Dr. Nilesh Jadav, and Dr. Santosh Shuta. As a chair session, I welcome IQC coordinator Dr. S. S. Dasade, as well as all teaching and non teaching staff of Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh Mahajale Sangora. I am happy to share with with you that conference has got good responses with 77 participants along with 25 paper presentation. I welcome all these participants from every corner of the country. Again, I welcome all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request IQC coordinator, Dr. S. S. Dasade to introduce today's keynote speaker, Honorable Professor Phoebe Gute, sir, Dr. S. S. Dasade. Okay, thank you. Sangula Taluka, Shetkari Shikshan Prasarak Mandala, Dr. Ganpatrao Deshmukh Mahavidale Sangula, Department of Statistics in collaboration with IQAC, organizes a national conference on statistics and its applications. The President of Inaugural Session, Honorable Principal of Dr. Ganpatraoji Deshmukh Mahavidale, Professor Dr. Yesham Mulani, Chief Guest of the Conference, Dr. Vikas Jigute, Coordinator of the Conference, Professor V. K. Ghadge, one of our colleagues, Co-Coordinator, Dr. J. Witt Homre, invitees and participants of the conference. My dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am immensely happy to welcome you to e-conference and Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh Mahavidale to the National Conference on Statistics and its Applications. First of all, let me record my gratitude to the President, Secretary, and Director of Sangula Taluka Shetkari Shikshan Prasarak Mandar for organizing this type of conference. And my colleague have interested me and Professor V. K. Gadge with the responsibility of organizing this conference. We organize national conference or events to encourage the students and researchers, especially from the rural areas. Approximately almost all of the presentations and invited talks to this conference are focused on applications of statistics. I believe that the young scientists from all over the country will benefit greatly. The conference has been prepared at digital platform, allowing for good discussions and we hope this presentation has been satisfactory. Dear friends, we have done everything to make this digital platform better and easier for you. Now, I would like to conclude my speech by presenting the chief guest of this national conference, 
professor vikas ji gute sir he did his msc and phd in statistics and he is professor of statistics he is professor and director school of computational sciences he is also head of department of statistics and mathematics punya slok aile dev holkar solapur university solapur he is ex register and in charge pro vice chancellor punya slok aile dev holkar solapur university solapur he is the director knowledge resource center university library also he is contact person for set examination at solapur center he did work on important committees of the university he is the member of budget preparation committee board of examinations and evaluation statute phd entrance phd test pg entrance purchase committee he also did work in library committee scrutiny triple a committee lic and also he did work on selection committee he is a member of senate management council governing body of autonomous colleges academic council research and recognition committee in statistics he is a chairman board of statistics in punya slok aile dev holkar solapur university solapur he is also member of board of studies in statistics and computational applications savitri bai phule pune university pune he worked as a member of studies in statistics in some four different universities from the maharashtra he is a member of board of studies in business economics banking mathematics and statistics from solapur shivaji university kolapur he is a member of board of studies in business statistics and business mathematics of dg college of commerce satara he is also member of board of college and university development committee and member of board of studies in statistics of some six autonomous colleges in maharashtra he is a member of ethical committee at pandit din dayal upadhyay dental college solapur dr vikas ji ghute is honored by international and academic excellence award 2022 he is also honored by saropalli radhakrishnan best teacher award in 2021 he is also honored as a best teacher award of punya slok aile dev holkar solapur university solapur he is honored by devang mehta national education award as a best professor in department of statistics professor dr vikas ji gute is also honored as a maha avatar 2018 casi community leader casi global mumbai dr vikas ji ghute is associated with fourth finance commission of maharashtra sixth economics sinus national statistical systems training academy ministry of statistics and program implementation government of india he is also associated with rusa pandit madan mohan malvi national mission on teachers and teaching of government of india he is also associated with indian institute of science education and research that is iser pune he is a member of editorial board of punya slok aile dev holkar university research journal dr vikas ji gute has google scholar citations of 217 his year index is 7 where he is having itn index of 5 he has published 45 research articles in well reputed and impact factor journals dear friends we are here with this great personality with this i invite dr vikas jigute for his inaugural speech thank you thank you so much over to dr vikas ji gute sir thank you sir thank you sir Uh, now i request our chief guest professor pb ghote sir for keynote address it's over to you sir thank you sir thank you uh, dr desade sir uh, for my introduction all the dignitaries joined for this inaugural function president of this function principal dr s m mullani sir convener professor vijay kumar ghadge sir invited speakers of today's conference professor tirupati rao 
डॉक्टर दीपक सकटे डॉक्टर अंजलि उपाध्याय मैम देन चेयरपर्सन फॉर टूडेज कॉन्फरन्स माय फ्रेंड प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर कोरे सर डॉक्टर नवीन चंद्रा सर डॉक्टर पोदार सर ऑल द पार्टिसिपंट्स देन रिसर्चर्स एंड स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल एंड वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू दिस इनॉग्रल फंक्शन ऑफ नैशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन इट इज माई प्लेजर टू डिलीवर द ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स ऑन नैशनल कॉन्फरन्स ऑन स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन ऑर्गनाइज बाय डॉक्टर गणपतराव देशमुख महाविद्यालय सांगोला एट द आउटसेट I would like to begin by expressing my sincere appreciation and gratitude to organizers principal dr mulani sir professor ghadge sir entire organizing committee for organizing this important conference it is a great great pleasure to have three invited speakers with us in this conference to share their knowledge regarding statistics and its applications in various fields the theme of conference is statistics and in its applications and with the hope that the statisticians can take an active role in improving the society welfare the aim of this conference is to provide a forum for researchers academicians students and industries to exchange their ideas to communicate and discuss research findings and new advancement in statistics the conference will be a venue to communicate and discuss how statistics can give contribution to improving society welfare and to give solutions to problems faced by industries and other sectors as we all know statistics plays a very important role in our day to day life to our daily expenses to government policies everything is based on statistics it also plays a role in business industries health science and many other fields where statistics is used regularly there are many uses of statistics in other fields also in education all the subjects directly or indirectly use statistics to understand the concept of their chapters so in business or in markets it will be help us to describe market conditions inform advertising set prices track demands and many more applications we can observe it also helps to analyze past performance predict future business performance and lead organizations effectively statistics is also used in every aspect of life such as in data science robotics business sports weather forecasting and uh, many more applications we can of statistics the theme of today's conference is statistics and its applications so i will now highlight some areas of statistics and its application where we can focus in future the first application of statistics is in data science as we know statistician is one of the top 10 fastest growing jobs in the world 
going by the rate at which ur is generating and collecting data it is not surprised that the expertise of those who can effectively analyze this data it is of great demand and is one of the most important applications of statistics statisticians or experts help collect study and extract relative information from the vast and complex data so this information is then applied to validate and further research make some sound decisions and derive public initiatives in research also statistics is very useful in all the disciplines it is important part of most science as well as social science subject it helps the researchers in the test of hypothesis and arrive some reliable conclusions the data generated from experiments and studies is of course never straight forward so one has to take into account the randomness as well as uncertainty and eliminate coincidences and arrive at most accurate finding so statistical analysis help to reduce or eliminate errors so that the researchers can confidently make conclusions that will then direct the further research then next application i would like to focus is when we use statistics in research particularly in social science research so it requires the review of literature so meta analysis of literature reviews use the statistics in best way before a researcher start new research so it is necessary to perform comprehensive literature review of all available published information on a specific topic however it is always difficult to make one definite conclusion from the multiple studies especially if studies follow different research methodologies have been published in different journals or spread over large time of range a statistical analysis of this study helps extract the common truth underlying all these studies or uncover hidden patterns of relationships one more important application of statistics is in clinical trial designs so in clinical trial design statistical analysis is in designing clinical trials when a new drug or treatment is discovered it has first to be treated on group or group of people to understand and it efficacy efficacy and safety a clinical trial involves selecting a population sample size defining the time range over which to monitor the treatment designing the phases and selecting parameters that will decide how effective the treatment is and if it is better than existing one biostatisticians can take on the task of performing statistical analysis of study helping not only to design it but also analyze and determine the outcomes in epidemiological studies also statistical applications are there in this study to determine the link between cause and effect of disease a statistical analysis involves identifying the most likely cause of disease this information is used to develop public health policies and implementation of preventive healthcare programs by the nation or by the states 
one more applications of statistic is statistical modeling statistical modeling involves building a predictive models based on pattern recognition and knowledge discovery it is used in environmental and geographical studies predicting election outcomes survival analysis of populations and many more applications can be done by using the statistical modeling as we know good governance also uses the applications of statistics good governance means governance means making decisions that benefit the constituents in an efficient and effective way governing the nation the data and statistical knowledge should play a major role in the process of making decisions and setting the policies so it requires good data and while collecting massive amount of data becomes easy but the collecting a good data remains difficult so this is where the statistician can help in a variety of ways we can help organizations understand the difference between good and bad data which is the crucial for good governance so we can help to educate people ranging from politicians and policy makers to general public on appropriate use and interpretation of data finally we can play a major role in improving statistical methods for more efficient and accurate data collection and analysis of data so these are the some topics which are required for further research so it can be the direct applications of statistics for society as well as government and non government sectors so i am hoping this conference will provide an important opportunity to exchange the newest practices in statistics and knowledge of emerging methods and standards for solving the society using statistical techniques so i wish you a very successful and productive discussions during this conference with these few words i conclude my speech and once again i thanks to organizers for giving me opportunity to be a part of this conference thank you thank you very much thank you sir for your remarks on uh, applications of statistics in various fields such as data science literature review clinical trial designs statistical models so you have explained in very well so thank you sir now i request our principal and president of inaugural session honorable dr s m mulani sir for his presidential remark dr s m mulani sir good morning all of you respected professor dr shibik gute sir convener mr vijay kumar gadge i quick coordinator dr s s basade all resource person and session chair my colleagues and dear participants it is a, a matter of great pride to be a part of statistics conference as we all know statistic has its wide applications in every aspects of life there is no field which does not require statistics nowadays very statistical techniques are 
being a heavily used in other disciplines of science as a result new branches of science are emerging and flourishing to greater extent recently developed applicative branches of statistics are biostatistics actually are statistic astro statistics and many others it is said that data is the fuel of new world who ever has the data he will be called to be a rich person in the upcoming days data driving techniques will be utilized in every sectors because of a uh, computer's data is uh, being uh, generated and stored in large volumes we have is full informative informations from these data statistician are working hard to develop new techniques in the age of artificial intelligence and chat gpt statistics has got tremendous importance i am really happy that gharge sir has organized this national conference in statistics in his talk professor gurte sir has also underlined the importance of statistics in different disciplines i am thankful to him on behalf of our college for spending time with us i wish all the every very best for the conference and i hope this conference will prove to be fruitful for your future research journey i thank the organizers for giving me opportunity to interact with you thank you thank you sir for your presidential remark uh, on behalf of organizing committee i pay vote of thanks for this inaugural session first of all i am very much thankful to professor v b gute sir for accepting our invitation and in spite of his busy schedule he has he has presented a wonderful talk as a keynote address so thank you sir my sincere thanks goes to dr s m mulani sir for giving us a permission to organize nc sa 2023 i am thankful to iqc coordinator dr s s dasade and head department of statistics mr v k gharge for giving me a responsibility as a organizing secretary thank you all of you for being with us i declare with permission of organizer the inaugural function is over तिरुपति राव पदी second invited talk will be delivered by dr deepak sakte and third invited talk will be delivered by dr anjali upadhi so we will start with uh, invited talk first the topic of invited talk is hidden marco model of financial marketing and the speaker is professor tirupati rao padi he is dean faculty of mathematical sciences pondicherry university pondicherry and the chairperson is professor v b gute sir director school of computational sciences puneshlok ahiladevi holkar solapur university solapur i will hand over the session towards uh, professor v b gute sir sir it's over to you yes thank you sir now first uh, i will introduce uh, professor rupati rao dr Tirupati Rao currently working as a professor of statistics and dean faculty of mathematical sciences 
Pondicherry University from January 2012. He initially joined there as associate professor. He is also worked as associate professor and professor of statistics at SV University Tirupati from July 2007 to December 2011. His teaching career was started in November 1988 and Mrs. Uh, at Mrs. A V N College, Vishakapatnam, a state government aided college, and worked with different capacities like ad hoc lecturer, UGC regular lecturer, reader, and head of departments up to 7th July 2007 for a span of around 19 years. He has served Pondicherry University as HOD of Statistics. Nodal Officer of AISHE, Nodal Officer of Swachh Bharat, Member of Academic Council, Member of University Court, etc. He also served the Government of India with capacities of Member Bureau of Indian Standards, Government of India, Member Advisory Committee, Economics and Statistics, Government of Pondicherry, etc. His research area is stochastic modeling. optimization methods and statistical computing now today's topic is hidden markov models for financial marketing now i request professor tirupati rao to deliver the, his lecture thank you sir thank you very much professor vivek bhute sir for your nice uh, and uh, uh, cordial introduction to the audience i am really delighted to participate in this program being a very vibrant academic activity that is uh, organized by uh, ganapatrao deshmukh mahavidyalaya sangola sir so jai jalit sir to... am i audible sir hello yes sir it's audible yes yeah. yes sir we are audible hope i am visible also right right uh so now <laughs> it's my turn to speak and on the uh i had to share my screen is it so Nice. Hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, in fact, I have given my consent to give a talk on hidden Markov models of the financial marketing. However. uh when i am preparing this uh, presentation i am in the impression that uh, i had to give some basic points with the markov models then only uh it will be rational for me so therefore i am just confined to the talk of my talk is uh, two state markov models of financial marketing studies you are all aware that as just now professor bhutas of has mentioned that uh, statistics is now indispensable discipline and it is catering its its uh, services in almost all disciplines as a part of that there is one interesting works of statistics or 
one interesting parts of the statistics is called modeling. So stochastic modeling is one of the areas where we have to make use of for prediction purpose or estimation purpose. In this talk, I am going to speak on the aspects like what is Markov model? What is the two-state Markov model? And finally, I would like to explain how to derive different probability distributions involved with this two-state Markov models through transition probability matrix. So construction of transition probability matrix, everything will be discussed. My total talk will be in two parts. Part one is theory and classical development. Part two is a real-time data from stock market that is applied to this one. And finally, results are explored and interpretations are arrived. With this, my talk will be completed by saying that my findings. Marco chain modeling for stock market prediction. What it says that prediction of the stock price behavior has become a high and interesting research area. It's critical necessity for every prof profitable company as well as for investors and shareholders in making a confident selection of solid investment in the stock market. To analyze and forecast the movements of stocks, a variety of statistical projections methodologies have been used. The methods like artificial neural network, 2013, data mining and regression in 2011, ARIMA modeling, 2014, Hendon Scholder methods, etc., are the considerable things that we have made use of it. So many of the above forecasting models require stationary time series data. There are two types of time series data. One is transient and another is stationary. So any data initially it is considered to be transient. We have to explore the stationarity among the transient data to arrive to the patterns within the data. So arriving to the patterns of the data is nothing but exploring the hidden probability distributions behind the data sets. So in practice, financial time series data are frequently non-stationary and non-linear in nature. They cannot be considered as additive models simply, necessitating the use of non-stationary time series models. Now. This is some reported work which was there in the studies. So I don't want to make a repeat of these things. Anyway, the study what we have to consider here is that I want to give some insights of this study. MCM has Marco chain modeling has been applied by many researchers in different times. Of course, the first man, a Russian mathematician, Andrey Markov. Applications in finance is mostly started in 1999. Stock valuation from 1994 to 2017, we have different kinds of models. Credit rating modelings, etc., are the models what we have. Is not changed, you know. Oh, yeah, now it is changed. The reported literature reveals that Marco chain models have been found as an accurate and efficient methods to analyze and predict 
the stock prices movements in the stock market. In this study, we have developed the probability distributions for the two-state Markov chain models along with their descriptive statistical measures. Of course, math formula derived, later numerical values also explored. We have applied two-state Markov chain on the closing prices of Nifty Bank. Now, to obtain two-state Markov chain, the objectives are to obtain two-state Markov chains, to obtain the probability distribution of each state in a sequence of length one, two, and three. Of course, four also mentioned, but I have not given any information on the four state. To derive the explicit functional relations of statistical measures, that means deriving mathematical relations for this, for proposed probability distribution, generating functions of the proposed probability distribution, but finally, applying the two-state Markov chains for real-time data, that is stock market data, for analysis and prediction of the short-term and long-run behavior of the share prices. And also it is determining the expected number of visits to certain state. Finally, computing the expected first return times of various states. These are the things we are going to discuss. Of course, if you observe the stock prices fluctuations, increasing and decreasing, there are two states now I considered for our study purpose. These two states are obtained on the basis of difference between current day value to the previous day value. That means current previous day value will be subtracted from the current day value so that you will know that whether there is an increase in price or decrease in price. If the difference between the current day and the previous day is greater than zero, then it is denoted as increment state. Whereas the difference is less than or equal to zero, we consider it as decrement state. This is the schematic diagram for understanding the two-state model. In a study of N1 plus N2 items, in which N1 times increment is observed, N2 times decrement is observed, then initial probability will be phi1 become N1 by N1 plus N2, Phi 2 become N2 by N1 plus N2. This A11 is the transition probability from the previous trial with result state I and the current trial's result state is I. What it means that the previous day, it is in increment state. The current day is also in increment state. The transition probability will be denoted as A11. Similarly, A12 means current day is decrement given that the previous day is increment. Next, A21 means current day is increment given that the previous day is decrement. And A22 is the probability that the current day's result state is decrement given that the previous day's state also decrement. This is the way you have to understand these transition probabilities. Right. In fact, these transition probabilities are the parameters. These are the parameters to be estimated from the given data. From the given data, we need a probability distribution. So our work is going to explain how to construct a probability distribution out of this transition probability matrix. Further, how to explore different statistical measures by deriving math formula and further application part come into the force. Now, nodes represent the states. Edges have weights representing A, I, J. I is taking one and two states and J is also taking one and two states. Phi I is initial probability for the ith state pi i greater than or equal to 0 and sum over i equal to 1 to 2 pi equal to 1. And further, a i j transition probability from i th state to j th state is, it is defined probability that x n plus 1 equal to means the current trial result state is j given that the previous trial the result state is i. In other words, you can say that it is future trials 
result is state J, given that the current trials state is I. So this is the basic structure of transition probability matrix. Of course, row sums of transition probability matrix equal to one. The rules for transition probability matrix is that it, matrix elements are probabilities, row totals are one, and mostly it is square matrix. And uh, if you say that the, assume that there is a one day sequence, if you want to go for it, the probability distribution of the states I and D of two state MCM in single day sequence are derived in this section. Moreover, for every derived probability distribution, the formula for their corresponding descriptive statistical measures along with generating functions are also derived. This is the function. Let x of omega be a random variable representing number of times state i occurs, the sequence of length 1. Then x of omega 1 will take two values, either 0 or 1. 0 means nothing happened. 1 means 1 times it's happened. So therefore, the probability mass function for taking probability that x1 omega 1 will be x, this will be when x equal to 1, it is pi 1. When x equal to 0, it is 1 minus pi 1. And it will be 0 otherwise. So by this time, you have a probability mass function of a discrete probability distribution where the random variable is taking two values only, simply binary. 0 and 1. So where pi is the probability of happening state i. So here we have derived different statistical characteristics based on the previous probability distribution. This is the probability distribution deals with increased state, state i, state i it is. So for that, these are all the math formulae, derived mathematical formulae for finding, for example, kth order origin moment, this is the value for all it takes 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, as you wish. Average number of increases, mean if you want, mean number of increment states obtained by 1. Variance is the formula. Third central moment is this formula. Fourth central moment is arrived this way. Beta 1, which is useful for coefficient of skewness, beta 1 and gamma 1 deals with measures of skewness. And beta 2 and gamma 2 deals with measures of kurtosis and measures of excess. The offset of various various is also calculated. This formula is derived based on the previous probability distribution. Similarly, moment generating function, probability generating function, characteristic function also we have obtained. So this is all in the previous slide we have distributions probability mass function. In the current <coughs> slide, these are all the statistical characteristics or measures which are derived in math formula. Now, second one is, this is also probability distribution function for decrement state. Here, random variable denoted with y. Earlier, random variable denoted with x. That deals with the increment state probability distribution. Now, this deals with increment, uh, decrement state probability distribution. This is the PMF where you have the probability mass function taking the real number values 0 and 1 only. Now, the different statistical characteristics derived, mathematical or explicit mathematical relations are these are the things. Okay. That is k order moments, mean, variance, third, fourth, central moments, beta 1, beta 2, gamma 1, gamma 2, MGF, PGF, characteristic function, everything was derived. This deals with one-day sequence, decreased state, probability distributions related statistical characteristics. Now, coming to the another one, two-day sequence. For example, the happenings, I am reading up to two-day sequence. Then what happened? We have the options like I and I, I and D, D and I, D and D. That means a string of four possibilities will come out of which if you want to formulate a probability distribution, when x equal to zero, it is for increased state probability distribution. 
of state two state marco chain in consecutive trading days sequences are derived in this section let x of omega random variable but it deals with the two day sequence this is the probability mass function for which we have pi and a also a deals with transition probability matrix now these are all the statistical characteristics we derived fifth order raw moment mean variance these are all the mean variance first four central moments after getting the mean variance beta 1 i am sorry mu3 mu4 these are all derived with four set of variation next beta1 beta2 also derived gamma1 gamma2 also derived so after that we have also derived moment generating function and probability generative function characteristic function this will help you to know the behavior of the population through this formulated probability distribution this probability distribution has four transition probability parameters two initial probability parameter that means there are six parameters that are involved in this probability distribution now coming to the same logic for increase state decrease state the probability mass function is this one similarly statistical characteristics derived in mathematical relations are these one and these are the different other statistical characteristics coefficient of skewness coefficient of kurtosis these things will help you the shape of the frequency curve and the humpedness or peakedness of the frequency curve <laughs> similarly mgf pgf characteristic functions are also will help us to know the behavior of the probability distribution of decrease states in two day length sequence similarly we have extended the same for three day sequence this is the probability distribution and these are the statistical characteristics for uh, increment state and uh, on the same lines we have discussed the other things also now coming to these are all the theoretical derivations as a model developer i have consider a two state markov model and derived the probability mass function from the derived probability mass function i have derived the mathematical relations or explicit mathematical relations for different statistical characteristics these are all the formula now these formula mathematical concepts may not be reached to the customer customer always bothered about the numerical things so therefore we have considered a data set from the website yahoofinance.com and the data we considered the periods from August first, two thousand eighteen to October twenty nine, two thousand twenty one, and around seven hundred and ninety four daily trading days on closing price on closing price of Nifty banks we have collected. So this is the data source. So this data now we are going to apply to the developed models and explore all the calculations. What happened? See, these are all the. It is the specimen data we have considered. Closing price data it is. For example, it is the current. I mean, uh, day one data. It is day two data. So day one minus day two you can have this value, and day three minus day two you have this value, and so on. So this is the way you have to find difference. Wherever you have minus. Or a zero, you name it as a D state. Wherever you have S sign in the difference, it is I state I. After that, we have item identified the transitions of D I. For example, D I. This is the transition. Then I and I. This is transition. I D. This is another transition. D I. This is the transition. Next one is I I in fact. Sixth observation is also I, so thus this transition is I I, and so on for all seven ninety four. These states will come to seven ninety three, and transitions runs comes to seven ninety two only. Right. So the graph what it shows that it is completely uh, transient. We cannot identify what are the patterns that are maybe. See for example from here to here. There is some pattern we are observing 
from here to here there is one pattern from here to here there is another pattern overall from here to here increment trend will be there but here there is no such so therefore there is a lot of stochasticity in the model of i mean after observing the graph total data this is the revealing so what i did is i have find the residuals and the residuals it is showing this is the phenomena residuals are also called volatility in closing prices this is the graph it is showing after observing this one we have constructed a transition probability matrix using ms excel this is the code we have considered this code is simply for finding different values and what happened earlier i made it that i and d total studies 793 observations are there out of which increment state is observed in 419 times decrement state is observed for 374 times so the probability initial probability is pi 1 it is 0.5283 pi 2 is 0.47 now transition probability is as i said i and i 234 times came i and d 184 times 85 times came d followed by i 185 d followed by d 188 this is how this one we have the transition frequency table once a transition frequency table is obtained you can get see this is the frequencies it is observing after the classifications how many ii how many id how many di what it means that previous day increment current day is increment is ii previous day is increment current day is decrement that is id previous day is decrement current day is increment that is di previous day is d decrements current day also decrement that is dd that way you have to observe this one after making that the transition probability matrix how it can be calculated it is something like this row frequency each row frequency for example 234 plus 185 419 so 234 by 419 is the first probability 185 by 419 is the second probability so that way this is the transition probability matrix we obtained this means a11 a12 a21 a22 in the previous case we have pi1 pi2 so pi1 pi2 a11 a12 a21 a22 all six parameters we have explored from the given data so the schematic diagram without notations this is the empirical model this is the two state markov chain model with the data given what it means that this is the transition probability increase to increase this is the transition probability decrease to decrease increment to decrement this is the probability decrement to increment this is the probability that way you have to understand now after making that actually a of power 1 that means order 1 kolmogorov transition probability matrix a power 1 it is this one it is completely transient to order to find the stationarity what we did is we have multiplied that matrix up to seven times then only that onwards you will have the same pattern what it means that the increment is 0.529 these column values are same these column values are same when you are getting this probabilities of this nature you you have achieved the stationarity so therefore you have to spell about the behavior in future so what it means that market is stabled at seventh day at seventh day after 294 of 794 observations from 79 95th day onward seventh day after seventh day only you would observe the stationarity so finally what the interpretation it is says that there is a 53 percent of likelihood there will be increment there is 47 percent of likelihood for decrement so in the market behavior it is showing that increment has more chance than the decrement 
So this is the indicator you are exploring from the data using the two-state Marco chain model. Now, this phenomenon, we are making that finding the values like closing prices, etc. State probabilities for forecasting the closing prices. These closing prices, the main purpose of this section is to forecast the prices. So, like stationarity, transition probability matrix, initial probabilities also we have obtained. Finally, we have to multiply this initial probability into transition probability matrix. You will arrive to the stationary initial probability matrix. So, these are all pi 1 means first order, pi 2 means second order. You can go for accordingly. So, we have obtained the different order. So, completion of state probabilities. Increment state is phenomena is like this. Decrement state phenomena is this one. This is how you can understand the behavior. Now, think to expected number of widgets. What it means that it is coming to the remaining to same state. This is the meaning. So expected number formula is obtained. This is the formula mu jjn, limit n tends to infinity, expectation of n jjn. Using this formula, expected number of widgets is arrived. Okay. This is expected number. For example, increment to increment, it takes 3.2 times. Increment to decrement is say 2.7 times. That way, you have to calculate expected number of widgets. It's something like a re-widget concept. Okay. Next. Determination of expected return time also. Once mu jj is obtained, you can find one, uh, mu jj can be obtained by 1 by pi j. Pi j means initial probabilities we have already. So find this mu jj and uh, so that expected return time also can be calculated. So, results of the probability distributions after finding that one day sequence, these are the probabilities. For two day sequence, what happened? One increment 0.46, two increments, it is uh, 0.29, zero increment decrements, uh, it is 0.23. Out of which, if you study two days data, it is observed that getting increment on one day as maximum likelihood. If you observe one day data, getting increment has maximum likelihood, one increment. And similarly, if you go there here in uh, other sequences, three day sequences, and uh, uh, 0.43, all three days increment has maximum likelihood. And four day sequence, if you observe, uh, this is highest likelihood means you will observe two days increment is highest likely. So, short term investors use to observe these indicators and accordingly they will decide when to sell the share and when to purchase the share that can be done with these distributions. This way, you have to make use of the probability distributions for that. Next, if you go for the next item is that Probability distributions, these are all the findings we have already discussed. And all these findings which will be helpful for decision making, mostly it is when to purchase and when to sell. So these are all the different findings already I have discussed. I know no need of reading again. So coming to the glance reports, findings of the statistical measures, the distributions, you see, uh, central moments, skewness, kurtosis for single day sequence, mean is this one, variance is this one, mu3 is this one, coefficient of skewness is this one, uh, beta2, gamma1, gamma2, coefficient of variation, these are all the different numerical values which are calculated from the formulae, the formula is derived from the previous slides I have already explained. That formula in turn obtained from the probability distribution. That probability distribution in turn obtained from the two state Marco chain model. Okay. This is the data related to a single day related. Similarly, 
next item is for two days and three days sequences also it was given. These are the mean variance mu3, mu4, beta1, beta2, gamma1, gamma2. Basing on this, you can understand what is the behavior of the data so that decision making. So if you want to know what is the volatility state, CV for three day sequence 0.49, for two day sequence 0.68. Coming to the previous slide, CV, CV I'm speaking, CV 105. So the number of days is less, the, the CV is more. See, the more the number of days sequence, the CV is lessing. What it means that the market is stabilizing if you are happening, the study is more number of observations. This is what you can have different indicators with the help of mean, variance, beta 1, beta 2, gamma 1, gamma 2, CV, etc. Okay, summary of findings, what it says that this study has considered two state Marco chain model to the closing prices of Nifty banks to the share prices of SBI to analysis and predict their future behavior of the closing share prices. Since it is not possible to get the exact prediction value in an absolute form, the MCM explained the movement of stock price behavior and probability measures only. The initial probability vector, the transition probability matrix represents the next day probability of state increment and decrement in two state Markov It is observed from the TPM in two state MCM that when the current state of Nifty Bank closing price is an increasing state, the share price will also be an increasing state in the next day with the maximum likelihood. It is the meaning. Okay. So this is what uh, my finding, the final findings are. This study demonstrates how MCM fits the time series data and can forecast the moment because of its randomness capabilities in which every state in the TPM may be reached directly by every other state, leading to favorable results. The findings of the study will surely help the future investors, particularly short-term investors and shareholders to make their decision about when to buy and when to sell the shares of any company by applying the proposed methodologies in order to make more profits or what it means that returns on their investment, ROI. So these are the references I have considered and uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much, sir, for your... Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Pachirao, sir. I'm happy, I'm happy if any feedback given to me. <laughs> uh, I will be happy. If there are any questions from audience, please. <coughs> participants if not audience uh, professor gute may give the feedback <laughs> uh, sir uh, really you have delivered very nice and informative lecture in today's conference it is actually real life actually it's my students work sir yes, yes. that is uh, the thesis work we have we have worked very a lot it's a nice uh, output we came. We got a very nice output. Yes. It is It is a real life applications that yes. uh, many people can use in the uh, stock market for uh, purchasing or uh, selling their shares. So on behalf of organizing committee, I thank uh, Professor Rupati Rao for delivering very nice and informative lectures in Today's session, I also thanks for giving me opportunity to chair this session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, one and all, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes. My special yes. thanks goes to Professor Tirupati Rao Padi, sir, for <laughs> delivering a wonderful talk on hidden Marco models of financial marketing. And also, uh, our institute is grateful to Professor P.B. Gute, sir, for chairing the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, now we will start the second invited talk. The topic of the invited talk is non-parametric tests for two sample location problem based on ranked set sampling. 
and the speaker is Dr. Deepak Saktesar. He is a head department of statistics, Central University of Tamil Nadu. And uh, chairperson is uh, Dr. B.G. Kore. He is a principal, Adarsh College, Vita. So, Kore, sir, it's over to you. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I want to express thanks to organizing committee for giving me opportunity for sharing this session. This now presently we are going to listen the invited talk number two by Dr. Deepak Sakti. I introduce him in short. My friend Dr. Deepak Sakte is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Statistics and Applied Mathematics, Central University of Tamil Nadu. You know her. His educational qualification is he completed MSc in 2009 from Sivaji University, Kolapur. In 2014, he completed PhD degree in statistics under the able guidance of Dr. D. N. Kasi. His professional experiences are he was worked as an assistant professor in 2009 to 2010 in the Department of School, uh, Department of Statistics, School of Mathematics, Mathematical Sciences, North Maharashtra University, Jargao. After that, during 2015 to 2016, he is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Biostatistics and Epidemiology, Augusta University, Augusta, USA. After that, from 2010 to 2019, he worked as an assistant professor in the Department of Statistics, Shivaji University, Kolapur. And from 2019, he working as associate professor in the Department of Statistics and Applied Mathematics, Central University of Tamil Nadu. He held many more academic administrative responsibilities. He working as a head of the department from August 2021 to till date, the Department of Statistics and Applied Mathematics, Central University of Tamil Nadu. He worked as a coordinator of postgraduate diploma in actual sciences, Sivaj University Kolapur during 2014 to 2015. He worked as a coordinator for MPhil PhD course in the Sivaj University Kolapur during 2018 to 2019. He held the responsibility of task force committee member, International Affairs Sale, Sivaj University Kolapur. He is presently working as a research guide and under his able guidance, two students are registered for PhD and one for MP. One PhD student is submitted his thesis. He has published more than 18 research papers in the national and international journals. He completed one minor research project. He delivered invited talks in conferences, seminars, workshops, and faculty development programs more than 43 times. He presented research papers in the conferences and seminars more than 14 times. He has organized the workshops, seminar, conferences more than 12 times. He has membership of many academic bodies. He is a life member of IISA, life member of Indian Society of Probability and Statistics, ISPS. He is a life member of SUSTA and member of the Executive Committee of the SUSTA. Such a rich academic biodata of my friend Dr. Deepak Sakte. Now I request him to deliver his invited talk on the topic 
non parametric fish for two sample location problem based on ranked seed sampling so please dr sakthesh uh, thank you very much uh, principal uh, dr bg kore for a very nice and long introduction uh, some of you might have even got bored maybe like uh, 15 10 15 minutes or uh, speaking just introducing the speaker anyway uh, uh, at the outset uh, let me thank uh, uh, organizers of this conference uh, particularly the convener mr vk gadge and uh, the principal of uh, this college uh, dr s m molani uh, uh, dr ganpatra deshmukh mahavidyalaya sangol for uh, giving me an opportunity to express my views on one of my favorite topic of research uh, grant example uh, i shall uh, keep myself uh, very uh, precise uh, and stick to the topic uh, and as the title suggests i'll be uh, speaking on non parametric tests for two sample location problem um, based on <coughs> grant example so uh, let me share the screen first Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. And am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Audible? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes. So, uh, as I said, like I'll be speaking on non-parametric test for two sample location problem based on rapid sampling. The roadmap for the presentation of the next half an hour would be. Uh, like i shall first introduce rancid sampling through uh, the definition need and uh, of course for examples and then we shall see a very famous uh, problem in non parametric statistical inference two sample location problem and how it can be approached when the data is obtained through rancid sampling rather than simple random sampling i will see some uh, existing tests available in the literature and uh, we'll uh, try to propose a new test which uh, uh, may work for rank set sampling uh, and be better than the existing tests and we have uh, performed some simulation uh, study and uh, share the results of simulation study and also illustrate the procedure uh, through an application to a real data although uh, yeah so to keep in the uh, in line with the team of the conference uh, that is statistics and its applications i shall see that uh, both the theory as well as the applications are discussed in detail in my presentation so uh, this rank set sampling some of you might not be aware of uh, like why uh, this rank set sampling is coming here uh, usually people work with simple random sampling which is more convenient and easy to handle uh, as far as inference procedures are concerned if we Uh, and just have a look at whatever the inference we have studied throughout in our MSc and your undergraduate classes. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we don't mention what sampling scheme is applied, but inherently we start with say let x one x two x n be a random sample, and by that we mean we have a simple random sample. And uh, our entire inference uh, is based on simple random sample, which is being taught in undergraduate and postgraduate. classes uh, so hardly people know like why uh, what is rank set sampling and why it is needed so uh, this slide essentially will tell us like why rank set sampling is required and how this can be beneficial to do inference in certain situations so uh, as as far as the simple random sampling is concerned it assigns equal chance to every unit in the population to enter the and uh, in that way we have a feeling like this may be a, a better representative rather a good representative of the population but when we look at the individual units in the sr example we can only conclude that they are on an average quote and quote representative of the population so whatever sample we get from srs is not uh, you know the, uh, the best representative of the population and as a result uh, 
course, uh, we have seen many other sampling strategies like systematic sampling or stratified sampling or probability proportional to size sampling and so on. There are so many sampling procedures which are available in the literature, uh, which perform better than uh, simple random sampling as far as estimation of uh, mean of uh, characteristic of interest is concerned. Uh, if we look at these procedures, which are alternative to SRS, they are all pre stratification procedures. When I say pre, it means like uh, the uh, some auxiliary information is used to stratify the population into subgroups, and then a simple random sampling is applied to collect data on sampling units. Uh, but uh, when we see at these procedures, they are uh, they they of course yes provide a better representative uh, sample. Uh, when the sample when the population is a structured population but uh, uh, but but one thing uh, uh, is missed out and that is like whatever auxiliary information was used to stratify the data uh, or to stratify the population that information is left out and only the sample obtained after stratification is uh, it is used for further inference so no use of extra information uh, happens in these existing procedures uh, from specific units. So then why not uh, uh, somebody think of a post-stratification uh, procedure uh, for performing uh, sampling and then uh, do inference, which may uh, lead to a better uh, understanding of the population. And as a result, like uh, McIntyre in 1950, he thought of uh, uh, implementing a new sampling strategy uh, as he was posed with some problems for implementation of the simple random sampling. Uh, ideally, uh, this uh, sim uh, rank set sampling is used whenever uh, we come across a situation wherein measuring the characteristic of interest is very costly or destructive. And we can measure alternatively uh, a very highly correlated characteristic easily, even just by observation, not by any sophisticated procedures. So if that is the situation, if we have an auxiliary information which is highly correlated with the characteristic of interest, and the characteristic, characteristic of interest is, uh, uh, measuring characteristic of interest is time consuming, expensive, and highly destructive, in such cases, one can go with rank set. Example. I'll uh, talk about like how this is implemented uh, and what exactly this ranked sampling is. Uh, as I said, like McIntyre, he in 1952 proposed the concept of ranked sampling in the context of obtaining reliable formula estimates based on sampling of pastures and crop plots. But uh, uh, of course, uh, this procedure uh, was not uh, didn't attract much attention of the researchers. Uh, because of uh, the complicated nature of its uh, uh, implementation and also the sample which we get is not completely IID in nature. So uh, theoretical uh, aspects were not touched by many people uh, until uh, Takahashi and Wakimoto in 1968 and Takahashi in 1970 developed a, a basic uh, statistical methodology for ranked sampling, particularly uh, the crude properties for uh, sample mean and uh, uh, and they worked out the variance of the sample mean. and then established particularly uh, that how it is better than simple random sample. And of course later uh, in 1988 Stokes and Sager uh, did some work on uh, inference uh, about the population distribution function. This uh, they, uh, Stokes and Sager they tried to uh, through the properties of uh, empirical distribution function obtained using transit sampling. And of course, I will uh, talk about this in uh, detail uh, at a later stage of my presentation. So, how people used it? As, as I said, like wherever destruction is a problem, is a problem uh, one can uh, think of this transit sampling. So, as a result, in this uh, summary in 1999 applied transit sampling for determination of normal ranges of bilirubin level in blood for newborn babies. Ideally, in India, if you see, like whenever a newborn baby is there, most of the cases uh, will get, uh, the newborn baby will get affected by jaundice. 
and uh, people will uh, start looking at the bilirubin levels to understand the severeness of the jaundice and then according to the treatment can be prescribed. But measuring bilirubin levels of newborn babies requires blood sample. And just imagine a newborn baby a day or two uh, days old and we are uh, putting a needle in either arm or thigh to collect the blood sample. How, how much painful it would be for the newborn baby. Uh, with the thought itself, like our mind could sure and as a result, uh, uh, what could be an alternative to uh, understand uh, the bilirubin levels uh, and whether there is any strategy to you uh, to apply so as to not to uh, uh, collect samples from each and every person but rather uh, from a few people how it can be done to establish uh, such ranges like blood sample must be taken from the sample babies and then tested in the laboratory but puncturing every baby would be like you know very troublesome so how do we do it uh, so an information like again the medical information is additionally available and that is like uh, the bilirubin levels uh, of a small uh, number of babies can mean that they can be ranked based on uh, like observing whether their face, chest, lower parts of the body and the terminal parts of the whole body are yellowish. And this is because uh, the yellowish color goes from face to the terminal parts of the whole body and uh, the level of bilirubin in blood goes high. So they are like, you know, highly related and therefore we can stratify or rather sort out the babies in such a way that uh, we collect sample uh, on the like lower lowest level of bilirubin as well as the highest level and as well as in between by first looking at their yellowish color like how much yellow it is and depending on the uh, strength of that yellowishness uh, it would be decided like uh, whether to collect a sample from that uh, baby or not and this is how you know like Things will be more clear in the for the slides when we shall actually see how the strategy is implemented. So, how exactly this uh, ranked sample is collected? So, basically, we uh, do a simple random sample. Of course, uh, measurement is not done. That is very important. Only units are selected, but measurement is not done. So, that is how we proceed. So, first, an initial SR of K units is selected from the population and rank ordered on the attribute of interest. This rank ordering is very, very important and that uh, actually carries the name rank set sample. So this rank ordering of the uh, SRS sample on the attribute of interest is done through, uh, uh, through an auxiliary variable and the auxiliary variable is uh, actually measured or you can say visually judged and therefore the ordering happens through judgment and not by actual measurement. Even you don't need to measure the auxiliary variable. You can simply have a kind of, you know, a judgment and based on that you can uh, rank the uh, observations or other units uh, in the SRS sample uh, in rank order fashion. And then the unit that is just to be smallest in this ranking is in, included as the first item in the analysis and the attribute of interest is formally measured for that unit. So like from a set of K units, only one unit will be selected for further analysis. And we can see like the smallest one will be selected. And then uh, only for that unit, the variable of interest or attribute of interest will be formally measured. And remaining units in that SRS will be discarded. That means no measurement on remaining units will be done. Then a fresh sample of another K units, independent of earlier sample, will be taken and the second judgment order statistic will be found out. And the second judgment order statistic becomes a part of your ranked sample. Process is repeated until you get K judgment statistics. So if we get all those K, so that K will constitute only, uh, of course, judgment cannot be, you know, uh, very vast. We can judge only like small, medium, high. So we cannot have a judgment to be very long. And if we do it in this way, our K, that, uh, that set size will be very K is called a set size, so that can, that will be small only. It may be three or four, and we cannot have more because our judgment will then uh, suffer biasness uh, if we increase K to a bigger number. So K is ideally three or four, and uh, uh, that much sample only will get in a single uh, uh, run, a single cycle. So, but uh, that K being small, 
uh, we cannot just rely on those many observations uh, that, is, that may be three or four in number and we need more observations and those can be obtained by uh, performing m number of cycles to get a desired sample of size yeah so this is how it is processed i already uh, explained about this slides i uh, will see on this slide particularly like how the cycle is implemented and what are these values so x bracketed one is actually the first order statistic from uh, CSRS of size k. Then you, uh, then we go uh, for the second uh, SRS of size k, and we collect only second order statistics, and that is here. And we can, uh, we, we process uh, proceed in this manner till we get kth order statistic from uh, the, uh, the set size. K. Now this uh, yields only k order statistics. Then we do the same process uh, m number of times, and then we get this complete sample as a rank set sample. Uh, this I shall explain with the help of uh, data so that uh, the idea will be uh, crystallized. So, uh, this data is actually from Nussbaum and Sinai 1997, who recommended uh, using field RVP values. These RVP values are nothing but right vapor pressure for gasoline. And they are, you know, field RVP values are actually measured by a raw instrument, by, by a, uh, I say a crude instrument, which uh, uh, is not giving accurate uh, values for RVP. But uh, this RVP uh, is a very important measure to understand the uh, quality of gas. Field. So uh, these values are highly correlated with the more precise laboratory measurements. But working out these more precise laboratory measurements is highly expensive and takes a lot of time so one cannot simply uh, uh, give a lot of values uh, uh, samples i should say uh, for laboratory measurement but a few can be given so based on field rvp values so uh, field rvp value provide a ranking mechanism for selection of a much smaller subgroup of gasoline samples to submit for follow-up laboratory analysis so what they did, they considered a set size of uh, uh, set size k of three, and m is equals to four cycles. So which leads to n is equals to twelve gasoline samples. Finally, so the k into four will produce a sample of size twelve. And uh, then how many SRS units we shall need for uh, getting one cycle? We need k square number of uh, uh, units. So uh, uh, total number of SRS units which we shall require. To get 12 gasoline samples would be uh, 3 square multiplied by 4, that means 9 multiplied by 4, 36 units. So we shall start with the 36, uh, yes, 36 uh, size gasoline uh, sample and uh, shall reduce it to uh, uh, rank set sample of size 1. So to select this RSS using the set size of uh, k equals to 3, this 12 gasoline samples uh, to be sent to the laboratory for more precise aggregate measurements. The first thing we must do is to randomly divide these 36 gasoline samples into 12 sets each of 12 sets of 3 each. So these are 12 sets each of set size 3. And then based on uh, the judgment, of course, now here this field RVP values provide a value. So no need to do any judgment. We can directly use the order statistics to decide which one is smallest, which one is uh, second smallest, and so on. So these are the number of the observations from this data. You can see the sample number, field RVP values, again sample number and field RVP values. So just imagine that all these are randomly, so what I said like randomly grouped into uh, 12 uh, subgroups, each of size 3, and they are represented here. So this is first group, second group, third group, then fourth, fifth, and so on. We have 12 groups. So this first group is considered as a first set uh, of SRS of size k equals to 3. And then we look for the smallest of this. So for uh, including into the rank set sample. So first to smallest in this would be like 7.85. This is the value which will be entering your rank set sample. Then from the second one, we shall look for the second largest. And second largest is 8.6. And from the third one, we shall look for the highest, so that is 9.25. This gives us a single set of order statistics, a single size. 
first order statistics from this first set second order statistics from this and then highest from this then we shall discard the remaining observations and then move on to the next set again we shall do the same thing first order statistics then second order statistics then third order statistics and proceed this until we complete the four cycles so all these bold uh, faced uh, numbers they will be the part of rank set now that was you know like how exactly the rank set sampling is implemented and now we shall talk about like why there is so much gap between the initial introduction of this rank set sampling in 1950s and then development of uh, uh, theoretical procedures in 1970 so why two decades were uh, gone and why nobody touched about uh, talked about these procedures the reason is uh, the complexity as we have seen like we need to discard some SRS units and then finally come up with a smaller tree uh, but this essentially leads to a much better uh, representative uh, of a population and that will be clear from the theoretical properties as we can see Dell and Clutter in 1972 uh, implemented uh, this balance here yeah, when I say balanced uh, whatever set size is there those many order statistics if you work out then the rank set sampling is will be balanced if we work out less uh, number of order statistics than set size then it is called as unbalanced we cannot go beyond that because set size is uh, uh, will provide the largest number of order statistics so uh, that is only the terminology when i say balance it means we get k uh, number of order statistics from a single size so in that case it is called as balanced if the number of order statistics is less than k it becomes unbalanced so uh, the length letter proved that the estimate of uh, mean from rank set sample has uh, lesser variability or lesser variance than the corresponding estimate from simple random sample. The, uh, the expression is there on the screen and this was proved for a, for a single cycle and if it is true you can say like if it is true for a single cycle it has to be true for uh, uh, m number of cycles easily. So uh, here we can see this mu star s yes, is uh, mean or other expectation of uh, yes to order Uh, as I said, like I'll talk uh, more about uh, uh, estimation of empirical distribution, uh, estimation of distribution function. Uh, Stokes and Sager were like the first who uh, gave a, gave a, uh, gave an estimator of uh, population uh, and distribution function through an empirical CDF for the RSS state. And the definition of uh, empirical CDF is uh, here. And they further showed that this FMKX given in this expression is an unbiased estimate of this perfect and that is for, uh, that, that, that coincides with the, the property of empirical distribution function from a simple random sample but uh, if you see at the variance the variance of this mkx is smaller than variance of the factor so the factor is ecd or empirical cd based on s so as far as distribution function estimation is also concerned the uh, rank set sample provides a better estimate for uh, population distribution function. The story doesn't stop here, and then after uh, these two uh, uh, properties uh, proved for rank set sample, people started uh, uh, looking at this uh, procedure as an attractive alternative. And now uh, uh, a lot of researchers are engaged in uh, translating the procedures for simple random sampling to rank set sample. And that's the power of uh, rank set sampling nowadays and uh, wherever needed people are using rank set sampling for doing inference uh, as uh, uh, contrast to simple random sampling uh, coming to our celebrated uh, uh, two sample location problem uh, the problem is uh, ideally highlighted through the hypothesis h not f is equals to g where f and g are uh, two distribution functions and alternatives are not equals to g. Uh, of course, this uh, delta comes uh, uh, into the uh, definition of uh, g, where g is nothing but if if you are here, uh, here you can see uh, particularly uh, this is your uh, empirical, uh, uh, rather I could say, distributed function, the FMX. 
and that uh, is empirical uh, in nature. GKY is another empirical distribution function for the second sample. And your G of T is related with T of through this relation. So G of T is equal to F of T plus delta. So only there is a difference in uh, the argument. The argument is replaced by T, uh, it is changed from T to T plus delta. Delta is in R. So delta essentially is stands for location parameter. And uh, the hypothesis of F equals to G at every T essentially uh, reduces to uh, testing delta equals to zero versus delta not equals to zero. So we begin with the two samples. One is denoted by X, other is denoted by Y with uh, different set sizes and uh, cycles. So set size is M in first sample, cycles is N. So sa sample size will be M into M. Similarly, for second sample, we have set size K and number of cycles Q. So sample size will be K into Q. So we have two samples with uh, two different sample sizes. Of course, the structure is also different. And the problem is to test whether the two population distribution functions agree uh, for location or not. Uh, a lot of uh, approaches have been uh, cited in the literature. But uh, as far as uh, rank example and sample is concerned, uh, only one test uh, is available, and that is given by Bone and Wolf. But I will just uh, go ahead with uh, uh, some initial developments. Hetman Sperger proposed a sign test based on uh, RSA data and showed that RSA sign test is more efficient than SRS sign test. And this happened in 1995. Later on, Osterk in 1999 and Osterk and Wolf in 2000 suggested median rank test sampling. And uh, uh, based on that, uh, people proposed. Uh, uh, procedures, uh, testing procedures for two sample location problem. Even in, uh, uh, in, uh, in 2005 by Wang and Zhu and in 2010 by Dong and Q, uh, both they proposed weighted scientists under unbalanced RSS and proved the weighted version that always improves the Pitman efficiency for all distributions. And recently, uh, of course, I should not say recently, but a decade ago, the Zhang et al. Uh, discussed the sign test using. RSS with unequal set sizes. So, uh, uh, if you look at the literature, as I said, like in 1992, Bone and Wolf came up with the RSS version of a celebrated uh, test in a simple random sample that is Man Witness EU uh, test. And uh, they translated the Man Witness EU statistic to rank set sample. And uh, uh, that statistic uh, happens to be one of the best uh, statistics for uh, this two sample location problem uh, till date, uh, until we came up with an attractive uh, alternative uh, through the developments made by Lyman in 1963 and uh, Fried and Darling uh, later, uh, who proposed uh, tests. Uh, a robust test, I should say, for two sample location problem for simple random sample. So we uh, uh, basically convert the tests from uh, side and dialing, which uh, highly depend on a lemon estimator for location, uh, which is robust in nature. It is given over here. You can see this uh, del 2, del 1, and then del 3, and uh, rather uh, S1 and S2. These are estimates for the scales. And then the combination of this del1, del2, and s1, s2 in the ratio produces uh, estimates uh, for a location in a robust way, which were used by Fried and Darling in 2011 to propose robust non parametric tests for location. So we can see, like Fried Darling estimators, uh, uh, they are poor in number uh, for different combinations, of course, uh, just. Uh, Excuse me for the abuse of notation k here. This k is different than the set size which I have used, uh, but simply this essentially uh, stands for 1 and 2. So you just have del 1 formula, del and s1. That one combination will produce a fd1. Then you put 2 here and s1 that will produce fd2, and so on. So basically, uh, we have four test statistics, and fortunately, all these uh, test statistics they uh, reject. 
get the null hypothesis for large value of absolute CFP. So uh, we translated the uh, existing RSS, uh, sorry, existing SRS versions to RSS versions and defined the uh, robust version of a location estimate uh, based on Lehman and uh, Clyde and that which uh, finally produces this test statistic and the test criteria. Uh, we uh, studied the uh, location invariance of this RSS version of Clyde and Lehman test and found that the statistic is location invariant. And further, empirically, we established uh, that uh, the distribution of this test statistic is symmetric. So the symmetry property uh, is also satisfied, but of course we have not yet shown it uh, uh, analytically. Uh, the analytical proof is still under uh, process. And we further uh, uh, studied the performance of this uh, uh, RSS version of Pride and Darling statistic uh, through simulation, and we uh, uh, fixed these uh, parameters, uh, or rather, I should say, the specifications for simulation study. Set sizes were uh, equal initially, and, and cycles were uh, kept as four and five, and 10,000 runs were uh, implemented. Nominal level was 0 0.05, and these were the different distributions for which the simulation uh, study was performed. Like normal exponential, PSN type 3, and Cauchy PSN type 2, uniform, double exponential, and largest. So, this essentially gives us a wide variety of uh, symmetric as well as uh, skewed distributions and we can see like uh, yeah so uh, that was for perfect brss that means the number of uh, uh, perfect in the sense like the judgment uh, statistic is available in perfect view and therefore ordering is done by exactly the order statistics so that is called as perfect balance bracket sampling and any imperfect uh, is also available in that case how uh, the performance uh, is there that also we counted for normal exponential and uniform distributions so i'll show you the tables how the performance will apply so tables with perfect uh, transit perfect balance transit sampling and these are uh, the powers of uh, tests uh, under perfect uh, balance transit sampling for different values of uh, delta, that is a location shift for uh, N1, N2, 12, M1, M2, 3, and R1, R2, 4. As we can see, like for different distributions, uh, this pride and dialing, which are this T1, 2, T1, 1, and so on, up here, these are four statistics of pride and dialing, and this one, uh, this column represents bone wolf test. And we can see, like, in certain distributions like Cauchy and then PSM, and also uh, for uh, the uniform and even exponential, uh, the proposed test statistic outperforms the bone rule uh, test. So that essentially uh, gives us an attractive alternative, even in largest, you can see for uh, small location shift also, it is highly. Uh, Detected, uh, rather I should say strongly detected by the proposed test rather than uh, existing bone wood test. Uh, there are so many tables for different combinations, and the story repeats uh, in a similar fashion for all the combinations. I'm just running through the different tables. There are 24 in number. And so on. So we also have an imperfect uh, RSS. And for that also, the same results are produced. Right. So I'll go back to my slides. Right. After uh, implementing the uh, process, or rather I should say after performing the simulation results, uh, it is our prime duty to check whether the procedure, proposed procedure, was really good for real data or not, and in that context, we uh, 
uh, applied in the proposed procedure on the real data given in Moon in 1990, and it involves effect of stress of blood pressure of males and females. So, uh, the data is essentially a univariate data consisting of heart rate and uh, uh, a weight of uh, 36 uh, females and 28 males. Hypothesis of uh, interest is. Uh, to test whether there is significant location difference between weights of males and females. So, uh, we select sample of size 20 foot from male population with set size M1, uh, 6 and cycle size R14 and another sample of size 20 from female population with set size M25 and cycle size R2. And the exact p values for test statistics, particularly uh, Rancid version of uh, uh, Pride and Daily and the one word test uh, were often uh, for implementing uh, Pride and Daily test. Uh, uh, we have to perform uh, permutations and uh, to, to compute exact p values, the one like permutations were performed to compute the exact p values for the uh, proposed RSS FD test. And of course, it is observed that the RSS FD test and one word Test strongly reject general hypothesis, and we conclude that there is a significant difference between the weights of males and females. And uh, yeah, so uh, finally, I conclude uh, that the proposed univariate tests are purely non parametric in nature, and under univariate perfect RSS, FD is an attractive alternative. Of course, I should not simply say a perfect for even imp uh, imperfect RSS, FD is an. Uh, attractive alternative to one word test for symmetric as well as skew distributions. These are my uh, some selected references. Thank you. Sir. That ends my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, once again for giving me an opportunity to uh, share my research results with. Any questions? Yeah. Very nicely delivered. We talked on the topic non parametric tests for two sample location problem based on Wrangler site sampling by Dr. Patpe, sir. Is there any question from the audience? Please. Anybody any question? I think there is no question as usual. Okay. Thanks to the speaker, to Deepak Sakhi sir for delivering the nice lecture. Now I hand over the chat to the next session. And also thankful to the organizer, my friend Gadge sir and the principal Polani sir and all his team. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are very much grateful to Dr. Deepak Sakte, sir, for your nice presentation. Also, we are grateful to Dr. B.G. Kore, sir, for chairing the session. Thank you, sir. Now we will move to the next invited talk. And the topic of the invited talk is content validation, validation and scale development in biostatics. And the speaker is Dr. Anjali Upadde, a biostatistician and IQC director, Anna Saheb Dange, Ayurved College, Sangli. And the chairperson is Professor K.G. Potadar, sir, head department of statistics, Azra Mahavidale Azra. So I request. Professor K.G. Poddar, sir, to chair the session. Poddar, sir, it's over to you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Now, next speaker is Dr. Anjali Upadde. Yes, sir. Okay. Currently working as a senior lecturer and head department of research in Honorable Sri Anna Sep Tange Ayurvedic Medical College and Research Center, ASTA. District Stangli. 
She also working as statistical consultant and mentor for NAC accreditation. She is also IQC coordinator in her institute. She is chief editor of Indian Journal of ODC of Ayurveda, associate editor of Subhadra International Journal of Ayurveda. She published seven books on various topics of statistics and published 33 research papers. Her area of interest is statistics, biostatistics, business statistics, quantitative techniques, research methodology, operation research, statistical inference, probability methods. Her educational qualification is MSc, MBA, PhD. She completed MSc in 1991 from Chuaji University, Kolhapur. MBA in 2010 from YCMOU, Nashik. PhD in 2015 from Tirak Master with David Pune. She also completed PG Diploma in Total Quality Management and Advanced Diploma in Computer System Software. She is selected as National Member of Indian Society of Medical Statistics, Nodal Officer for Vidyanjali Higher Education Program, awarded as National Research Excellence Award by RSS Association New Delhi. She completed three research projects. She participated as a resource person in more than 40 workshops and conferences. By this brief introduction, I request to Dr. Upadhyay Madam deliver his talk, deliver her talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I am very, uh, hello, good morning, all of you. Actually, I am very uh, grateful to Dr. V.K. Gadge and our Chief Grace, Dr. S.S. Dasre, sir. Uh, I listened to Dr. V.B. Gute, sir. It is a very nice talk, actually. Those are explaining all the applications of statistics in various fields. Actually, I am very uh, appreciated to Dr. S.M. Ulani, the principal of Dr. Ganpatra Deshmukh Mahavidyale Sangola. I am very grateful and thankful to them to give me this particular opportunity. Today, my topic is content validity and the skill development. I want to talk about this. I want to share the screen with you about the content validity. Is it visible to all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. So here we are starting the reliability, validity, and content validation, and the scale development. Okay. First of all, we will go that what exactly the... Hello? Jagdish, sir? Hello, ma'am. Hello? Jagdish, sir? The slides are not rolling. Hello? Hello, sir? Hello, madam. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, madam, yes. Uh, slides uh, move out, I don't know what you want to say. Madam, you can open the slide first. Let's start the slide first. Let's start the slide first. Let's start the slide first. PDF अगरे करेची गरज नहीं है ना सर नहीं नहीं कई गरज नहीं 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 ओके ठीक हाँ मैडम अतः स्लाइड शो माना 
खाली सगळ्यात शेवटी ओके नाव ओके so good of good morning all of you i want to talk about the reliability validity and content validation and scale development actually this conference is about the applications of the statistics i am working in a field of the bio statistics and last 11 years i am working in this particular field of medical sciences i am dealing with the various medical fraternities as a allopathy homeopathy ayurveda physiotherapy nursing and everywhere uh, i as a being a research faculty of the maharashtra rajya university of health sciences i am dealing with the various problems of the medical statistics so this is the one of the new content that is a content validation actually the reliability validity and content validation it is a part of statistics but nowadays there are some sciences which are the sciences which are called as a homeopathy or maybe the ayurveda or the unani or siddha these are the uh, sciences that are not much recognized and those are the individualized sciences individualized health health professionals they need they don't have the they have the qualitative all the data but they don't have skills about it and they need to develop a skills so whenever they are setting a new skills then those should be validated properly and this my presentation is talking about that how we can going to validate that particular new skills in the health sciences how we can do the skill development in the newly method so this is one of my topic so first of all wherever we go our goal of research our goal goal of research it is to obtain the information our goal of research to obtain the information for the relevant purpose of study first of all we have a proper finer criteria research question according to the research question we start our study so whenever the research question is said we need to set the objectives of that particular study and we set the hypothesis that what we are going to conclude about it so according to the research question we collect the information with a maximal reliability and the validity so first of all we should understand what is the meaning of the reliability whether the research methods can reproduce the same results in the multiple times reliability is nothing but the repetition of the work repetition of the work with the reproducibility of the results so whenever the reliable data is reliable means it is a consistent means it is a predictable wherever the reliability is there then the data can be said to be uh, related for the normality so two types of reliability everybody of no known as that what is the external consistency procedures and internal consistency procedures by these two procedures we are going to decide the what is exactly the reliability in the data so we will discuss about the external consistency procedures means means where the we compare the findings of the two independent processes of the data collection with each other okay wherever the suppose we take a, a simple example of the anxiety test then the same anxiety test can be given two times to the same person okay but for at the first time a person is anxious to feel the test but the second time he knows about all the results of that particular test and it is it is applicable and it is a practice of that it is a memory effect that we cannot get the proper results or the success results from that so this internal consistent external consistency has a proper reliability of test and every test that is we can repeat the test but for the same different periods or the same period or for the different administrations also for the different areas also so it have a memory effect and the practice effect also there in that particular consistency results this may be happen with the parallel forms of reliability the two equivalent forms of the test of the same attribute suppose we are taking the maxwells and the anxiety test and we are going to, going through the james and anxiety test these are the two tests but we can compare the results of these two tests parallelly with the sam with the same sample or maybe the different sample again the same sample can be given the alternative forms of the test or the comparable forms of the reliability 
on the again different periods on the different time spans on the different areas therefore we can get that the same results can be can be reproducible or not that is why whenever we are dealing with this that test retest reliability and parallel forms of reliability the second one is there is a internal consistency procedures these are the three procedures to calculate the reliability uh, of the data first one is a split half reliability everybody know that we split the data in the two halves and we are comparing that particular uh, data second one there is a kudder richardson estimate of the reliability which is a formula number 20 from which we can do the internal consistency third one it is a cronbach alpha everybody know that cronbach alpha should be greater than 0.6 that is why we can understand is the there is a proper reliable solutions are there or the data is a consistent or not internal consistency external consistency can be due and we can we can give the assurity that the data is a reliable the second thing is that we are talking about the validity what do you mean by validity exactly that whatever the we got the results from the data that result should satisfy our objectives as well as our hypothesis so whenever we are measuring the exact degree that what we are claiming to measure and that degree of measure is satisfying our validity everybody statistician knows that there are different types of uh, validities first one is a content validity content validity normally we calculate the content validity with the losses method losses method that losses has given the uh, basic things that uh, three responses that not necessary the response second one useful but not essential third one essential in these three ways we are calculating the essential content as a one and not essential contents as a zero therefore with the losses method we do the content validity with the cvr is equal to any minus n minus 2 divided by n minus 2 in this whenever we want to do the content validity whatever the data has been prepared or the questions has been prepared the construct has been prepared those are given to the different panel members and these panel members are giving us the response on the basis of that particular response we are calculating the content validity second one there is a criterion validity what do you mean by criterion validity take a same example of the anxiety test in this the suppose xy test and yw test those are the different tests but those are given as a anxiety test therefore different criteria and similarly the similar results are they producing or not this is a criterion validity the same results are given to the one group or maybe the two groups or the other groups and we are calculating the got getting the similar results from that those are criterion or the concurrent validities again in the constant validity we are going to construct the dependent and independent variables under the one construct okay so if we are getting getting the results correlation coefficients positive then positive correlation coefficients or positive to our objectives those are those are convergent validities and those are not co correlated those are also can be calculated because in the health, health sciences positive results and negative results both are all the applicable results therefore those are the discriminant validity in such a way these are all the types of validity and these all types of validity can be calculated with a proper factor analysis so how we measure this particular reliability and validity scale development and content validation are critical to meet the work in health social and behavioral sciences because majority of the data in the health so and science social and behavioral sciences are the qualitative type of data therefore the data has to be converted into the proper numerical scales but sometimes it is not possible therefore there is a need need of the scale development our goal was to concisely review the process of scale development and straight forward a matter as a possible and both facilitate the development of new valid reliable scales and to help the improve existing ones okay some scales are available those are available in a market those are paid scales but whatever the scales are has been developed those may be in a different areas 
therefore whatever the skills are reliable or applicable in our area in our environment in our climatic conditions and for the our field feasibility that should be that should be uh, created once so to do this we have created a primer for best practices that is a skill development so now what is the scope of this particular skill development procedure in the research okay or in a biostatistics as the science advances the novel these questions are put forth and new skills become necessary skill development it is a very obvious for the this individualized sciences like homeopathy or ayurveda or yunani or siddha it is it is a necessary now that we develop a new skills there are many steps to for the skill development there is a significant jargon between the different techniques but the work can be done the costly and time consuming but the complex statistical analysis is always required for this particular statistical analysis so furthermore the health science and behavioral sciences degrees do not include the trainings on this particular skill development only the related statisticians knows that how to develop this particular skill therefore there is a need of this particular training of uh, training development there are number of incomplete skills used in the measure of mental physical behavioral attributes there is no fundamental our scientific inquiry therefore there is always scope for the content validation in a biostatistics here we are discussing about the one of the example a simple example that uh, i have here taken here a simple example as a simple example of a developing a constant and content validation of the emotional quotient this is one of the example that we are going to discuss now for this particular simple case study or this simple research our objectives are to assess the skill development technique that how you are uh, going through the skill development techniques to determine the validity and reliability of the data in the skilled measurements to developing the reliability and validity of the data we are proving that we are approving that these skills are very proper and they can be used in the generalized way so we set a hypothesis that the scale of emotional quotient was not significantly reliable and valid and alternative hypothesis as scale for the emotional quotient was significantly reliable and valid so for this content validity we are going through the phase 1 the phase one it is about the atom generation that identification of the domain and the atom generation that is selecting which atom to be task that domain identification means for which purpose or for which research question we are going for the atom generation or what type of question we have how we are going to confirm the constant which is called as a domain identification specify the purpose of the domain suppose we are talking about the emotional quotients then which are the factors are related with the emotional quotient is the behavior is important is the talent is important is there a uh, conditioning is important or is there control is important is there individual individual is important these are the domain factors and we need to decide first of all that the domain identification specifies the purpose of the domain confirm there are no existing instruments that means we take a review of literature and we are finding out that these domains are available or not okay in the review of literature also we will find it so the second one is we are going through the atom generation atom generation means we have to take a proper review of literature from the various uh, literature sources like uh, pubmed web of science science direct or maybe the other ugc or uh, google scholar these are all the literature review uh, databases like a cross reference and we are going for the assessment of skills there is a different research designs as per the research designs we need to generate the atoms for this particular in the phase of atom generation so first of all we are identifying the domain and the atom generation second one in the phase 2 we are going through the content validity that assessing these particular atoms adequately to measure the domain of experts that means whatever the domain we have prepared whatever the construct we have prepared whatever the in a simple language whatever the questionnaire we have prepared that questionnaire has to be given to the expert judges 
then who are these particular expert judges those are maybe the uh, professors in that particular field or those are the those are maybe the experts in that particular field and those experts are giving the opinion about the the data is a necessary useful but essential or the essential or the relevant or not relevant this is the judging from we are taken from from the these particular judges and we are applying the statistical procedures including the content validity they show content validity index coefficient of alpha cronbach alpha and delphi method by the expert judges so this is the third step that we are uh, evaluating the data by the experts now after evaluating the experts we are evaluation by the target population means what we are going to do first of all we will take a experts opinion with the experts opinion again we are we are finding the data with the losses method now if the losses method proves that these scales are necessary those are essential and they can be judged with a particular population study then we will take a pilot study first of all we will take a pilot study and in the pilot study also the data is proving or the scale is proving particularly then we will for, go for the phase number 2 as a scale development step number 3 the pre testing questions that is a pilot study it is a very necessary ensuring the questions and answers are meaningful if we are getting the proper answers meaningful answers from the respondents or maybe the patients then we are fulfilling that particular data and then we survey administration the sample size gather the data from the right people and after that we will do the factor analysis so with the factor analysis whatever the atoms or construct we have been prepared the atom reduction process is over there so step number 7 there is a test of dimensionality that is a test of the latent construct has to be properly hypothesized it will they do the a test of cronbach alpha that is established responses are very consistent internal consistency has been proved then the test of validity has been given the no in and after that we will uh, confirm that this particular scales are valid for this the valid the valid content test these are the some phases in the summary i have given this that the in a phase one which is a totally qualitative phase step 1 we are going through the data collection in depth interviews or the focus group discussions are there in a step number 2 we are do the data analysis in thematic coding and themes for the skill development in this phase the review of literature phase is comes under the phase 1 with the review of literature we are doing for the atom generation phase phase number 2 it is a quantitative data that we are go for the atom generation with the help of the construct with the help of review of literature with the help of the domains that what we have been decided so we'll go for the content validity test the content validity by the proper factor analysis and we'll go for the pilot testing again we'll go for the data validation exploratory research and the atoms are finalized and then whichever the scale we have been prepared it is open that question is open to give the results or take a responses and can be used in the process of data collection now we'll see now we have taken the particular example of emotional question is it there so now here is our research question that association between the final year medical students emotional intelligence and the academic performance now this is our research question already the hypothesis and objectives we have been proved so these are the four dimensions we have taken the four dimensions this is the four dimensions that the first dimension is the control the control indicates that how much control an individual has over the adverse situations okay how much they can control the control is not there is they stressed out is they uh, reacting very uh, stressfully or is they reacting are they having any medical problems and all that this is the control the second one it is a ownership ownership says that such is the exact reason for this particular adversity and willingness of the individual to take a necessary measures okay this is the ownership the third dimension we have collected it has indicates the content to which the trouble affects other areas of the individual life means 
whatever the anger is there, if the organ organizational behavior angle is there, and then is it spread to the family level? Okay, these are the some of the questions that the reach. And the last one dimension we have taken it is endurance. Majors, how to take along the problem and how it affects the last indigenous life. Means whatever the adverse conditions are there, are they forgetting it? Are they keeping the those memories in their life? Are they stressful about it? Are they having the health issues about it? It is the endurance. Therefore, these are the four dimensions that we have been prepared for the emotional question questionnaire. Now, this particular questionnaire we have given to the expert opinions. Now, the expert has to give you our degree of relevance as number one, the atom is not relevant to the dimension and to be measured. The two, the atom is somewhat relevant to the dimension to be measured. The third one, the atom is quite relevant to the dimension to be measured. And the fourth one, the atom is highly relevant to the dimension to be measured of the constant. So in the last, last uh, slide, we have seen the four dimensions and on these four dimensions, we are taking the expert's opinion. Now, here is the dimension number one, the control and the questions, they have been prepared like this. You can read the questions. In the dimension control, we are saying that you are suffering the financial setback. Or people respond unfavorably to the latest idea of the improvement of the organization. Or your personal and work obligations are out of balance. You are exercising regularly that you should know. Your computer crashed the third time this week and you are lagging back of the work and overloaded it. These all situations having the stress, preparing the stress in that particular emotional question. Now, dimension number two as a ownership. Now you can see in this slide that for each dimension we prepared, the researcher prepared the five questions. One, two, three, four, five. That means the construct is the one control. In this particular one construct, we have been prepared the five questions. Okay, this is the atoms. These are the atoms. We are generating the atoms under the dimension control or under the construct control. So one is the control and the atom generation is as the five questions. So the dimension number two it is the ownership and we have prepared the again the five questions for this. That you are overlooked the proposed promotion. Someone you respect always purposely in ignore your attempts of the discussion. In this way, we have prepared the, and this particular question is given to the experts, expert or the judges for the degree of relevance. The judges has to fill only the tick mark in the degree of relevance. Either they feel that this question is necessary. Second one, this question is necessary, useful, but not essential. And the third one, it is essential questions that has to be put in the questionnaire. In this way, they can going to give the remark. This is the dimension number three, which is the reach. One, two, three, four, five. Again, the five questions are there. That reach, you are criticized for the brick project, high priority projects and important meetings that you are get canceled. You hit a red light on your way that you are getting late for the appointments. You never seem to be have the enough money. This again, the reach, reach. And the dimension number four as an endurance. You accidentally delete the important emails and you forgot to best friend's birthday. All the stress factors given you to have the effects on the family problems also. You are unable to take a much needed vacation or the holiday or expensive searching. You cannot find your important documents. These are the endurance that whatever the stress is there are a control endurance reach and is directly effects to the long term effects are there with having this particular emotional quotient. Now you can see there here, the expert has given the opinion for these all questions, all questions. As expert number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have preparing the 10 experts, but how many number of questions has to be taken as an expertship? It is depends upon the researcher. That you may take a five, five experts or maybe the 10, up to the 15 experts or maybe the 40 experts you can take, okay? But the Lausche's method says that you can take maximum 40 experts to calculate, to take your opinions. So the next, 
here is the losses method the losses losses says that there is a content validity index calculated by the losses method that is a cvr is equal to ne minus n by 2 divided by n by 2 what do you mean by that what is any any is a number of panel members indicating that the term is essential now in the previous slide you are saying that the four things are there 1 2 3 4 wherever as 3 is there wherever 4 is there only that one given as a 1 and wherever is the 1 and 2 is there it is given as a 0 therefore here we are calculating the number of panel members indicating the term essential that slide that session has to be prepared and we are calculating that any minus n is equal to number of panel members number of panel members number of panel members are there and those are with this particular formula cvr is equal to any minus n minus 2 upon n minus 2 we are calculating the content validity now you can see here by lashes lashes method by the lashes table we are seeing the number of panelists are there and minimum value of the reliability suppose five members are there then we have to just check it for the 0.99 value but we have the 10 panel members so for the 10 panel members i need to find out that my cvr should be greater than 0.62 this this is greater than 62 therefore the cvr our cvr should be greater than 0.62 so you can see over here suppose we have taken the 25 members 25 experts then 25 experts says that the same thing that they are saying saying the essential things then we need to only the cvr value as a 0.37 means number of panel members increases then the cvr validity index should goes on decreasing so in this example we have taken this particular 10 panel members for this 10 panel members we are checking the value 0.62 now see here this is a particular calculation table by the losses method so the atom numbers that we whatever the questions we are preparing the questions are coordinated as atoms so q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 these are the questions any that we have been calculated that the any means number of experts says that it is essential now the n by 2 it is a 10 by 2 it is a 5 Now CVR calculated is a zero point eighty. Zero point eighty, it is a greater than zero point sixty two. Therefore, this question is a significant. Again, question number two. Again, any is ten. N by two is five. Again, CVR is equal to one. Therefore, it is a significant. Okay, but you can see this particular question number nine. Question number nine. The n is equal to seven. N by two is equal to five, and CVR is equal to zero point forty. Which is a less than zero point sixty two. Therefore, this particular question has to be eliminated eliminated from the constraint. You can add the new question to the uh, contents or new question to the constraint. But again, suppose you are adding the those the, uh, that particular question, then again you have to go for the content validity index. Therefore, this particular question has to be eliminated or the ignored, and we can see that how it is ignored. by the factor analysis so in this way we are calculating the content validity index hello hello ha ah, madam uh, thoda sa stuck jala parat par share kara lagel ka sir ha ah, parat tumhi restart kara is scroll open okay. cut text okay i'm going to stop the sharing i'll share the screen again because maybe the network problem may be there okay we are here so after this that we have been prepared the content validity then we are going through the average various average variance extracted and convergent so we'll do the factor analysis the two types of factor analysis we'll do the exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory factor analysis these two factor analysis we are do with the spss 
then we will go further so we have to again calculate the average variance extracted and what exactly the conversion and discriminant validity so this is a conversion validity that we calculated the ave and conversion validity cr so this is a formula that factor loading after the factor loading we are finding that f1 this is particular f1 atom number v7 v6 and v5 how we can do this these these are doing with the spss with the factor analysis okay again for the uh, f2 factor construct f1 is there construct f2 is there construct f3 is there therefore again the atoms has been given v7 v6 v5 now you can find out that whenever we are preparing the questions for the expert opinion the sequence of that particular questions has been diversified or it is a changed it is changed because the factor loading says you that which questions has to be inserted in under the which construct in this way you can find the factor loading f1 has v7 question v6 question and v5 questions so we calculated the ave that is the average variance extracted and the conversion validity also so conversion validity it is already 2.32 1.74 5.99 and this is a particular uh, average is there therefore this is going to the good scales that we have been preparing now we are going through the discriminant validity again this factor is giving the ave values are over here and the square roots are over here so for this we are uh, we are calculating this particular square roots in the cr that is f1 0.86 again 0.57 0.84 and this is a table about the discriminant validity now for after that we are going through the cronbach alpha now in the reliability factor analysis we calculate the cronbach alpha with the kmo barlett test it is a cronbach alpha 0.819 now you can see that cronbach alpha based on 0.820 number of atoms are 10 so we it is a higher than 0.6 therefore data is reliable again so for the confirmatory analysis we go for the amos spss and whatever the factors we have been prepared it those are has been given to the amos spss and we are calculating the variance of variances of it a particular mean and variances can be overloaded here with the confirmatory analysis of amos spss now again we go for the chi square test that chi square test value you can see over here the chi square value it is a 85.227 okay and the sample nodes are 55 and degrees of freedom with 32 therefore chi square is also reliable the model fits now whenever we go for the model fitting summary then c mean npr values are see the npr values c mean values that is the imr values those are again valid values GFI values; those are again values. These are the values we are having with the MOS SPSS. So this is a particular table of the model fit of the MOS SPSS. That is a model chi square. We are already calculated the chi square values, which should be greater than zero point zero five. Therefore, the overall fit is there, and uh, p value is is greater than zero point zero five means our model is chi square is valid. Again, the goodness of it. GFI again GFI it is a greater than zero point ninety five or average GFI it is a zero point ninety again we are having it it is a zero point eighty therefore again it is a valid now it is a TLI norm fit index or a Tucker Lewis index again NFI is equal to greater than zero point this is the data given by the MOS SPSS as a model data therefore we are we are comparing these results with our results. and we are saying that either our scale is a valid or not so rmsea root mean square of error of examination it is less than 0.08 cfi greater than 0.90 srmr less than 0.80 therefore these are model fits that we are comparing our results of the models with this particular results these results are compared to this particular model results now so now we have a model fit with the mos spss and which says that cfi always varies with a 0 to 1 cfi value closest to 1 indicates that the 
good cutoff of the acceptable fit of the uh, acceptable fit for the CMI greater than 0 0.90. But we have the value of CFI, it is a 0 0.80 in our scale development. So indicating 90% of the covariation of the data reproducible for your model. Okay. Second one, IFI. This should be again 0 0.90. 0 0.90 again it is a acceptable fit again tli again this is a tli again rmaaca these are all saying that this is a zero point period these are all the standard values and we are going to pair our standard values with that particular fit so in the conclusion whatever the emotional index the case study we has been discussed discussed it is that says that as a it is a self administered questionnaire which was used to gather the data from the researcher. And this question is divided into the four dimensions. The reliability of the scale was established by reporting the internal consistency and stability of the reliability with the Cronberg alpha 0.83. And in the previous slide of the CVI, we all see that those are all significant values. So the content validity was established by computing the atom level and the scale level content validity index and CVI is equal to one. So the panel of 10 members and it is greater than 0 0.90. Therefore, it was acceptable. So making the scale development, we are putting this particular questionnaire as a very approachable and transparent and we can facilitate for the any number of any number of respondents or the patients to calculate the emotional quotients for the health, social and behavioral outcomes. This is a conclu conclusion of our this particular, this particular case study. So in the conclusion, I want to say that a well-designed scales are the foundation of much of our understanding of the range of phenomena, but ensuring that we accurately quantify that the that pervert the measure is not a simple matter. So scale development, it is a more approachable and transparent. So we hope to uh, facilitate advancement of our understanding in the range of health social and behavioral outcomes as a qualitative data. So this is from me. These are some references that these are references for the SPSS, MOS SPSS, and whatever the content validity. These are some references that I have. These are my books that the these books are written for the medical statistics that the first one is a constructivism of medical statistics. Uh, these are the books. Those are approved by as a test books by the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences. And this is a book of statistical inference. Those are volume number one, two, three, which is the syllabus of BSc part three science. And this is from by my side. So I always say to the all health, health professionals that take a help of always the proper statisticians so they can help you to uh, give the proper applicability of the data. That is why they can publish their papers and the research things in the proper uh, thing, proper uh, websites and the proper database indices. So this is from me. This is my content. This is my myself. So if you have any questions, you may ask me. Any queries from participants? questions thoda questions asil to vichara kai problem nahi hai madam nahi tarto kunach question nahi disturb nahi nomre sir it is not possible to summarize the data of content validity in a particular uh, 40 minute or 50 minute, but I tried to be on this. Is there any questions? Okay, there is no questions. On behalf of organizers, I am thankful to Dr. Anjali Upadhyay for nice talk. I also thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Finally, I thanks to all participants. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
uh, on behalf of our institute, uh, we are very much grateful to Dr. Anjali Upadhyay, Madam. Uh, Madam has presented a nice work related to biostatics. Even 40 to 45 minutes are also more than sufficient. Madam, you have presented nice work. So thank you. Also, we are very much grateful to Professor K.G. Poddar, sir, for chairing the session. Thank you. Uh, now the invited talks are over. The technical sessions will be started at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, so all the participants are requested to join their respective Google Meet links at 2 p.m. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All the participants are requested to join their respective Google Meet link at 2 p.m.